What's up YouTube, to Bixi here with a new video on my completely reworked Vortex Cultist, or Coltot, I should call it nowadays, Occultist Guide. First of all, I want to point out that this is a showcase video with a little bit of tips and tricks, but that the general um, bulk of information is to be found in my written guide, which is to be found at poe-vault.com, and the link will be in the description below. So in the background, I took five divines out of my stash in Ancestor League. Do note, this character was... Um, geared up very late into the league which means that i overpaid for a lot of these things just because there aren't many people available slash online but anyhow i got a bit lucky on linking the chest i got a bit unlucky on making the scepter i think all in all it equates to being about average and i think we can say that the character in the background will definitely be accessible for four to five divines if you play this kind of character on a league start now the content it's going to tackle it's going to kill some random um quest pulls and it's going to take quite a while at that, but it showcases that it's pretty hard to die in those kind of fights because you're playing a build with an insane amount of uptime. As you're playing Coltot, you only need to make sure that your dots are up on the boss and then you can just dodge, so you don't lose much damage by playing safe. That being said, it's not like it's immortal, but it can deal with the boss pretty well. Other than that, I'll showcase you a map of a... Uh, tier 16 grand design map with 100% back size and some essences, because I think essences are probably the toughest content you can play against in high tier maps uh atlas wise i mean you can make an argument for harbinger and stuff but generally i think essences are pretty tanky and i wanted to show that it kills that fine which means that the damage for um mapping is more than sufficient because it doesn't have the insane amount of damage but it has enough to make every content you will encounter feel okay um outside of the quest bosses which you can do, obviously, as I'm showcasing them, but they're a bit slow. Um, but that's fine, right? You only need to kill them a couple of times and you can enjoy a super cheap and super convenient mapper that will generate your currency and then you can invest a little bit more into it. Um, the POB also shows a bit better gear and then those things will become a joke, right? Because then you are A, immortal um, against them. Well, not immortal, almost, you know, immortal. And then you will do a shit ton of damage, which means that they will die almost instantly. But anyhow why the guide why the rework so i used to have a low life variant of this build which was a necessity back in the day basically because well vortex was really weak uh or not weak but you know it required some stuff to get it going nowadays the combination of vortex creeping frost and uh, cold snap is so strong that you need virtually nothing to make it work there are a couple of iterations out there i chose to make it as simple or as non-gear slash luck dependent as I could. For example, I opted into EB to make sure you didn't have to deal with mana region. Uh, you didn't have to find solutions for that on gear whatsoever. You didn't need to find reservation efficiency stuff outside of a 2% jewel. And it makes it so you can literally just buy that one jewel for a chaos and you can play the build completely as you want as you arrive into maps and it'll just work right. So I made conscious decisions like that just to make it as easy and as, as smooth and as trivializing as possible on, on what I think is super cheap. Do I think it is the best iteration out there? I don't know, there's probably other things you can do and you can invest more or you can tackle stuff differently. But I think if you're looking for something that virtually requires no luck, no currency to drop, basically no nothing, this just always will work. No matter if you're like unlucky or if you're bad at gearing up or whatever. And that's where I wanted to go with it. And I think it does that really well. As you can see in the background, it's just really smooth sailing in a very high tier map. Or in the highest tier map with essences and a lot of pack size, which is usually scary for builds. But because of the layers of defense, it, it kind of doesn't care what it runs into. Um, it's running Grace, Determination, Spell Block, Normal Block... Spell Suppression, it has Recovery on Block, it has 25k Armor, 25k Vision, it has a decent life pool, or an okay life pool, it has a max res and high gear, it has the Occultus 10% damage reduction versus enemies, like all in all it's really tanky, and as you can see the damage is plentiful, right, like if it kills an Essence in this amount of time, I honestly feel like you don't need more damage to map, uh, do I think it's a great build to chain 25 bosses one after another? Obviously not, because then you want to kill them as fast as possible. Does it kill every single boss you'll encounter in your quest, in your quest line and in your Atlas progression line? Yeah, for sure it will. Can it die to them? Yeah, sure. If you tank a slam, if you tank, tank a tentacle, if you're going to tank either balls, um, or extract balls, yeah, sure, then it'll probably die. But that doesn't matter, because every build will. 
So in general, I think it's probably one of the safest bets you can play. If you're new, if you want something smooth, if you want something easy. Another topic that will be often will be talked about by a lot of people is why do you play occultists and not elementals like everybody? Again, this comes down to preference uh, and mainly to, mainly to convenience. I think elementalist has is its merits. I also think it packs more punch. But again, I don't think you need more punch. I think having occultist pops and occultist safety and things like that is generally just better for a newer player or for a player who wants to follow a video guide or a written guide. I think occultist does stuff better. I don't think elementalist is strictly worse. I think it's different. And I think this is what you should play if you are new and if you are looking for guidance. So, like I said in the video, there's a five divine budget. You will see this uh, kind of slow eater kill, which is sped up, obviously, because, well, otherwise it would take too long. Uh, I also play this fight really badly. Like, I don't maintain frenzies and my hatred arises off, like, almost all the time. But even then, you know, you take two minutes to kill a boss. It doesn't really matter, right, in the grand scheme of things. You can kill it. You don't need someone to carry it for you. You don't need any help. You can just go in there, kill it yourself real quickly, be out, be done with it. The POB, which is provided, also provides a um, little bit more scaled up version where you save some skill points, you run a cluster jewel, which then makes it easier for you to suppression cap, opens up some, some affixes for more damage and so on and whatnot which kind of pushes it from like this is like what 800k damage or a million damage or something like that and it pushes to like four to five million damage so there is definitely ways to scale it but i don't think you should so showcase a build in its prime form i think you should showcase it in its worst form so people see what they can expect at their entry levels of gear and i honestly think it does that just fine that being said i hope you guys will like it when you play it it's a very cheap very simple iteration of the build if you like the content, make sure to press that subscribe button. I hope to see you guys in the next one.